So we really think that our software Easel is one of the easiest pieces of software to use if you are going to use a CNC. Now, even though it's easy, that doesn't mean that it's also not powerful. So in this video, I wanna walk through six features inside of Easel Pro that specifically can help you grow your business that you might have not seen before. So right off the bat, even if you don't have a CNC, you can actually sign up for a trial of Easel right now to kind of see the stuff that we're talking about. And there's a link down in the description if you want to check it out. But once you set up a new account, one of the very first things you're gonna do is actually create a project. And the way we organize projects is going to be the first feature that we think could be beneficial to your business. And that's going to be with project labels. So you can basically think of labels as tags. So every single project that you have can have one or multiple labels. And they're actually really easy to use. So I just have an untitled project right here. I'm gonna call this cool sign project and we are going to add a label to it. And you can see I actually already have some labels that I've used in the past, but for this one, I'm just gonna call it a general sign. So I'm gonna hit sign, I can apply it. Now you also see I actually have a couple other labels in there as well, one of which is the stadium sign. So actually I have used this in the past, even before I started working at Inventables. I carved all of these football stadium signs and I sold them on Etsy. And an easy way for me to organize all of them was to use a label system. So in my case, I had labels other than just stadiums, but like what sport were they were, were they football, were they basketball, what state were they in, what team were they in? So I was really able to go through and pull up whatever I need quickly. Now for you, if you're selling products, more than likely you're selling multiple types of products, whether they're different ones in the same series or you have different series. So you really can see how these labels can help you organize all of those things together. And then to actually see how all of these work, if you come up here to the top, if you click the pro icon, you hit filter, and then you can do by multiple labels. I'm going to do stadium signs. And then once I select that filter, then all of those projects are going to pop up. Now our next feature, which is a fairly new release, is going to be 3D carving. Now we're not gonna go deep into 3D carving in this video. Actually, I've done a full walkthrough right up there if you want a full tutorial, as well as a few other videos if you wanna check those out to kind of see how it works. But on the business side of things, we're able to see people offer products at a higher margin versus if they were just 2D Carve. So whether that's on Etsy or Facebook Marketplace or your own Shopify store, if you have a 3D carved item, whether that's an element within a bigger sign or a bigger project, or it's the actual 3D carve itself, we definitely see people making a higher profit as a result. So if you haven't tried 3D carving, it's already included in Easel Pro. I encourage you guys to check it out and see if there is a way you can incorporate 3D carving into what you currently offer so that you can make more money. Now, our next feature in Easel Pro is gonna help you in a bunch of different ways and has to do with custom bits as well as custom materials. And in this case, this is actually Corian, which we do offer through our store, but you might buy either bits or materials that we don't offer. You can actually load those into Easel. And then all of that happens inside of our toolbox. So if you come up here to the toolbox at the top, you can see bits, materials, and cut settings. And those cut settings are gonna be a combination of the bits and the materials. So if you did wanna come in here and add in some custom bits, if I click bits, I can hit add bit up here. And instead of invitables, if you hit custom, let's call this a 90 degree V bit. And then we're gonna select V as our option. Then you can put in your cutting diameter as well as the angle and hit save. And then if I look in my V bit category, you can see here is our 90 degree V bit that we just added. The exact same way on the material side of things. And actually right now, I don't even have any custom saved, but if I do, I can go custom material. So for this one, we're gonna do walnut, wood. And let's say this is actually a pretty big piece. So we're gonna do 12 by 12 inches with a quarter inch. Save that in there and then it shows up. And then what you can actually do is save cut settings as a combination of those two. So you can either add in your cut settings right here, select the machine that you're using. In this case, it's gonna be XCAR Pro. We're gonna use that new 90 degree V bit. We're gonna select Walnut, which we just, even though Walnut is already saved as a stock, this is just the new Walnut that we added. If it, for whatever reason it's different, let's say you do your feeder rate of 150 and hit save. Now what's nice about that, let's say we put in some text. Uh, we're gonna call this Acme, this is going to be Walnut, the actual text of it. If we change our material over to Walnut, which is the custom walnut that we put in. And then if we come over here to the top, then we change our bit to that 90 degree. You can see our cut settings now is getting this saved custom cut setting. So it's loaded for walnut with a roughing bit on today's date. It's also nice if you adjust these. At the end, it's also gonna ask you if you wanna save those as custom cut settings in the future. 
So this can apply to any bit and any material. Now we already have a bunch of different materials that are already in the system, but you can definitely go in and add your own as well. In this case, we already had walnut, but maybe the walnut you're getting, you wanna have a little bit separate than whatever is stock. You can definitely adjust it and make it custom to your situation. Now we can also put in custom materials. So just like in the toolbox, if we came over to materials, you can do add custom materials. In our case, we are going to do a custom one, and this is actually going to be popular, uh, which is actually a popular material that we know a lot of people use. And I'm gonna set this at 12 by six with a thickness of 0.75, and then hit save. And now we have that material that is showing up. Now what's really powerful about this is you can take the combination of your bit as well as your material and save an actual cut setting. So to do that, if we come over here to cut settings inside of our toolbox, we can add a cut setting. We're going to do it on our XCAR Pro. We're going to select that 90 degree V bit that we just added. We're going to do popular, which is the new one we just did. And let's say we do this at 150, plunge rate of 30, and a depth pass of 0.25, and a spindle speed of 1600. And then you can make notes or whatever you need and hit save. So then coming back to our project, I'm just gonna put in some text that says test. And if we switch our material over to Poplar, which everything in the toolbox is gonna to show up at the top, I'm gonna to click that. And then make sure I've got my 90 degree V bit selected. So this custom one right here. And then when I do that, if I come over to my cut settings, you can see that we are using my 90 degree V bit plus Poplar cut settings that is right there. Now you might run into the situation where you actually need to make some adjustments and you might up doing a manual cut setting. You can either go into your toolbox and update your cut setting there, or if you actually run your machine, whether you're doing a cut or engrave, and at the very end, it'll actually give you the option to update your cut setting in the future. And that customization is really where it's going to help your business because all of that is going to help save you time, which in turn helps you save money. Now, going back to 3D carving, that is one area where we see people use these specifically with the detail bits. So those are gonna be the bits that you're gonna use for your finishing passes. So you might have some pretty custom bits depending on the material and the projects that you're working on. And then through Easel Pro, you can set those up and save your cut settings so that you can use it in the future. Now, the next Easel Pro feature you may not have seen has to do if you are cutting out a bunch of different parts. So in this case, I've just got this square set up inside of Easel. If I come over to my cut menu and I drag this all the way down to the bottom because this is three quarters of an inch, you can see now we are cutting all the way through the part. Now that looks great in theory, but sometimes in actual practice, the cut may not go all the way through. And that is definitely due to a bunch of different factors. So on the CNC side of things, maybe your work bed isn't perfectly level and you actually need to surface it. Or even then on the material side of things, maybe you don't have something that is perfectly surfaced on the top and the bottom. So as a result, you might do all this cutting, but then at the end, you don't actually get your part cut all the way out. So then you have to go in and fix it. One easy way to help fix that is inside of the actual cut menu. So you can see when we went all the way down to the bottom, so once I hit 0.75, you've got this add depth. And so what this is going to do is cut into the wasteboard to ensure that you've actually cut all the way through your shape. And you can actually define whatever depth you want. You can see you got options from 0.01 inches all the way to 0.15. I'm gonna select 0.1. And so then all that does is just add that extra 0.1 inch to the already 0.75 inches that's gonna be going down. Now what's also nice is say you have a bunch of different parts. So in this case, I just have three squares. Maybe all of these cut out except for this guy. So maybe this hasn't cut out the whole way and you didn't use that additional depth from the beginning. What you could do is actually duplicate your workpiece. So if I come down here to the bottom, this is my workpiece. If I hit duplicate, and then I can just delete these guys. And then on the cut menu, make sure I've got my additional depth set to it and then rerun your cut. And that's gonna save you from having to run the entire operation all over again. Now on the business side of things, just like a lot of the features we're talking about, the real benefit of this is it's gonna help save you time. So you're not gonna to have to go back and manually cut things out or rerun the entire operation all over again. You're gonna get the parts that you need from the get-go. And on the time side of things, normally that additional depth of cut is not gonna eat up a bunch of machine time, especially when you compare to having to fix it after the fact, maybe you have to manually cut out the part, you gotta sand the piece and get everything to look right. Having that additional depth from the get-go is gonna save you from all of that and result helps save you money. Now our next feature is gonna be dependent on the material that you're using. And this is raster 
fill. And this has to do with how the actual tool path is generated in the direction that it goes. So for this example, I am just showing you a circle that is being cut out. This is a project that I did a while ago that has these circles cut out. And typically fill operations will just use the offset strategy, meaning that it will normally just start in the middle of the shape and then slowly work its way out. But depending on your material, that might not give you the best surface finish. So with wood, you're gonna have to take into account the direction of the wood grain. So even though I did use this offset strategy, I'm still gonna need to go back in and sand some of this down to get it smooth. Now instead, it would have been better if I took into account the direction of the wood grain. And you can actually adjust how these tool paths are generated inside of the cut menu. So first you can see in the cut menu that it is clearing out the pocket. But if I actually come over to my cut settings, I can define how this is actually going to happen. So you can see right now the default is set to offset, but you could also set it to raster. And you can raster back and forth in both the X and the Y direction. So first you can see what it looks like if I'm just using the offset method. But instead, if I wanted to take into account the wood direction, I can do the same thing, run it again. You can see that's going to be going back and forth. And then on the business side of things, this is again, another example of how Easel Pro can help save you time because you're not having to go back in and fix any of the imperfections in the surface of your material, specifically with wood, you're not having to go back in with sandpaper, get into all those edges, get it perfectly smooth. Because from the get-go, you could take into account the direction of the wood grain and then have a cut that's gonna work a lot better with that. Now, the next feature we're gonna talk about has to do with the jog menu. Now, once you've got your machine turned on and connected, you're gonna see that this card menu, as well as this little navigation icon are gonna turn green. If you hit that navigation icon, you can see the jog menu. So from here, you can obviously move your machine around. You can also change the interval. But then down here at the bottom, you actually have these preset locations. So first is your home location, and the second is your work zero location. All the home location is, is basically as far to the front and as far to the left, this machine can possibly go. So literally right here. Now, sometimes your home and your work zero position are gonna be exactly the same, but a lot of times you're gonna put your material in a different location. So let's say we wanted our material to be right here. The front left corner of your material is going to be your work zero. So by accessing that jog menu, you can actually get to your work zero position as well as your home position. Now, in order to save the work zero, first, you're going to need to home your machine. So we're going to hit home. So now we've homed our machine and it's really important to home your machine first because your work zero position is going to be dependent on where the home is. So it needs to know where to start so that when it moves to its work zero, it knows what the difference is. Now to actually set our work zero, we're gonna come up here to the carve menu. We're gonna go through this until we get to our work zero section of the carve menu. So you use your Z probe to set the Z distance, but for this, so I am going to move the machine so I get into position. I'm just gonna get it close. Then from here, I'm gonna hit use new position. And at this point, this is now our work zero position. Now let's say we actually did that cut. If I come back up here to my jog menu and let's say I move this around, so if I hit that work zero first, it's going to home itself and then move back to that work zero position. And like with a lot of these features inside of Easel Pro, where this is gonna help you on the business side of things is just helping you save time. So you're not gonna have to set this up every single time you do every single cut or carve. You've got it already preset, especially if you have a preset location on your machine, you'll be good to go every single time you do it. So those are some of the top features that you may not have seen before that can definitely help you with your business inside of Easel Pro. Again, if you wanna check out Easel Pro yourself, there is a link down in the description, as well as links to the XCar Pro and everything else that we offer at Amenables. All right, I'll talk to you next time.